And glory to God, we got three bulletins up here today. <laughs> I know, it's multiplying already. There was one earlier, now we got three. Glory to God. Amen. Well, welcome again to Faith Christian Fellowship uh, of Tucson. We, um, you know, there are a lot of things that the Lord has told us. I'm really excited about this year. You know, actually, everybody I talk to really in the body of Christ, I've been talking to a lot of preachers and other ministers and other folk, and they're just really excited about this year. Uh, uh, this, not this past week, but the week before, I met with a number of uh, pastors uh, here in town. Actually, I did, had two meetings. One was a prayer meeting. I uh, went to with uh, uh, some folk that I've been uh, building and growing relationship with. And then uh, last week, uh, Josh and I actually met with uh, 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 Pastor Nelson uh, from uh, Save Our Streets Christian Church. And we had uh, some his youth pastor was there and some other youth ministers and stuff from around the city. And we all got together and we're just talking about some things about vision and what was going on. And it was nice because you kind of got to take a chance to just ask everybody what stuff God's been telling them. And it's just always so refreshing when you get to do that with people uh, of from other pastors and other churches and things and say, well, what's God saying to your church? What's God saying here? And being able to just kind of look at that as a whole. And, you know, and there's a little bit different, there's always a different emphasis because we're different bodies and we have a different focus in the community. There's a reason that there's a lot of, that there's different churches in the community. Amen? But it's, it's just always so fascinating to see the overall picture, the things that God's telling people and how that just really meshes and flows so nicely together. He's pretty consistent across the board. Amen? It's, it's exciting. And one of the things that he's been telling us, he's told us a number of things this year, but there's one particular word that, uh, uh, that we've kind of come back with that, uh, uh, from Pastor Virgil's time away last year that just really re- has been resonating here in this place. And does anybody know what that word is? We've been talking about it the last three weeks. He's turning it up. Amen. Now that means a whole lot of stuff, and you've got to go online, and you can l- start listening to what all that, some of that stuff means uh, for us. And Pastor Verge will be back next week to, to pick up some more specifics of what that means of, that we'll be doing for this next year. But it says, he's turning it up. Amen. I love this time of year because we get to talk about vision. And every time we start talking about vision and remind ourselves what we're doing, I get, I get pumped up. I get excited because it helps me refine and focus where, back again where we're going and what we're doing. And it helps me to look at myself and look at my involvement in the church and other places and things and say, all right, what have I just gotten doing that's just peripheral? Not that it's not necessarily a good thing, but it's just a distraction. You know, it's something that someone else should be doing. That's really someone else that's called and anointed and, and to that. But what things have we just gotten into doing that's just for the sake of doing? And it's not really on the main focus of the point of what we need to be doing. And so uh, um, it helps me refine myself in, my, in that direction. And this is helping refine us as a church. I'm just going to read a few things that, uh, that uh, he mentioned uh, last week. One of those was he actually just quoted that place where the Lord said, I am turning it up. Get ready for the fountain to flow. He's turning it up. You know, this is a place that when God, back in, it was in 2003 when the Lord first spoke to Pastor Virgil and told him to open a fountain of his healing power in this place. That is the Lord's healing power because Pastor Virgil doesn't have any. (laughs) Amen. Praise God, he's a vessel of healing power, just like you. Amen? And, uh, uh, but it, so, th- so that meant a lot to us when he said, he's turning it up. You know, I always think about, uh, uh, now Leo will probably have to correct me later <laughs> about my, my plumbing analogies <laughs> and, 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 you know, water pipe and all those things. But, you know, at, at your house, you know, we always just think about the, the water in terms of the faucet there in my house. And I turn the little faucet on and water comes out. You know, and there's a little ball joint in there in the, in the faucet. If you ever take those things apart, don't. <laughs> Unless you're sure you can get it back together. Because then the water starts spurting all kinds of ways and it's just, it's not, it's not good. Your wife gets mad at you. and uh, <laughs> Then you go buy a new faucet, right? So that's a, but uh, you, you turn the, 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 the faucet handle and there's a little, there's a little, 
a ball valve in there. When that turns, it lets the water come through and the water flows. Now underneath your sink, there's probably another little shut-off valve that works pretty much the same way. Some of them are spin deals. And you spin them four, five, ten times, whatever. Other ones are just the, I like those little the quarter turn ones. Those are nice. I mean, you're done. It's open. It's closed. It's open. It's closed. It's open. It's closed, right? And, but there's a, a, a joint there. I mean, a little ball valve, a place to turn it on and a place to turn it off there. You can control the flow. You know, some of the, the bathrooms in here at one point, they were squirting out everywhere because they needed cleaned, right? And uh, we got it cleaned, and praise God, I think they're working better now. I haven't tested them lately. But uh, um, for, for initially is what they did. They just, instead of opening it up all the way, they only opened it about half, halfway. And that prevented the water from spraying all over your, your shirt when you went to turn it on. To, you turn the valve here, but there was so much water pressure in there, and there was some sort of disruption in the way. And that thing that was disrupt, disrupting the way was disrupting the flow of the water. And so instead of going down the sink and on your hands like it's supposed to, it went straight out on your shirt. <laughs> and so all these, it was in the ladies' bathroom. Sorry, ladies. So the ladies, now this, has been, this was like, you know, five, six months ago. So the ladies would come back into service. They'd all have this wet spot right here. <laughs> Praise God. Jesse took them off, washed them, cleaned them all out real good, popped them back on. I suppose they're still working well. I haven't heard anybody come to me with a wet shirt saying, fix the bathroom. So, but then on the outside of your house, there's another one. You know where the water's actually coming into your house? There's another little thing there. Amen? So if you ever had a leak in your house, you, you can shut it off right there at the house. Amen? Well, then there's another one down by the street where the city water comes in, where the water meter is. And there's another valve there. Isn't there? And, and that's where, they, that's where the, they had those nice keys. Or pe- you can get in there with a, a wrench too, you know, and, and turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, right? And that goes, then it goes through the meter on up to your house. There's another valve. Then it goes in through that valve to the different bathrooms and usually, or your toilets, and there's a valve down by the ground. And then there's another valve on your sink. But that ain't all the v- valves there are. It backs up even further from there. You just follow the pipe on down, and somewhere else there's going to be a, a, another a, a water station, another pump that's supplying that pressure and those things. And there's big valves there. Amen? I don't know if Robert's here. Robert Noble does some of these big valve jobs. Amen? Well, there's lots and lots of big pressure in those things coming in. Leo's probably messed with a few of those too, I'm sure. Ultimately, you follow it all the way back through a series of these things, and you get to the water plant. And there at the water plant, there's an even bigger valve. You know, someone's got the button. There's always somebody that's got the switch. Somebody has got control of that flow, don't they? I mean, if they didn't, I mean, there could be all, there's all, when, when water pipes break, it's a mess, isn't it, Leo? Yeah. <laughs> Streets cave in. We've had some of those in town before where the water, the water pipe broke under the street, washed all that water and stuff away, and then what happens is just... Right? Somebody needs to be able to shut that thing off. Whew, did you hear that? A 12-inch line with 100 pounds of pressure coming through it makes a big mess. <laughs> Amen. Well, here's, here's my point. When I think about he's turning it up, I just get that picture. of Man, there's all these little valves along the way. And God said, he's turning it up. Well, he's not going to turn on the valve in your faucet in your house. Which, one, which valve is he turning it up? He's turning up the big valve. He's turning up his valve. Amen? He said, he's turning it up. He's turning up the fountain. The power that's flowing here. That's why we've been spending a lot of time, and Pastor Virgil will be going back again next week, talking about the things that has been put on our hearts, the things that we're doing in this house to help to, to uh, uh, get that, the, 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 the junk out of the way so that it can flow freely in this place. So he's turned on that main valve. Amen. And then we, but we need to make sure that we do some things here in this place together to keep the valve flowing. And then individually in our lives, keep it turned up 
so that when we go out to the community, out to the home, out to your apartment complex, out to the job, that there's that unrestricted flow coming there to you and that we're we're able to keep it turned up in the city and in the community. Amen? You know, community is a place that we live in. It's not a place that we preach to. And that's the same for us as believers. It starts in this community first. This is a community. It's, we're a family within the family of God. It's a, we're part of a larger community. Amen? And out, out in the city of Tucson, we're part of the community too. So in here, we don't just preach to each other, but we live with one another. And sometimes that stinks. I mean, it does. Why? Because I, I have problems. I have faults. I have bad days. You have bad days. You have problems. There's circumstances and things that happen in your life. And that some means at some point, that, and, and I've got enough stuff going on in my life, that when you have a problem, it's like, nah, I don't want to think about your problem because I've got my own problems. But if we're a community, amen? We're a community. It's not just about me. By the week, way, next week we'll have our, uh, our Super Bowl Sunday. I guess most of them are still meeting. I haven't heard not. But they have a direct connect meetings be going on. I'm, I'm sure some of them may be enjoying the game and worship and having a good time, other things. But there, we, we have groups around the town. Why? So we can get together and celebrate the community of one another, living with together with each other. Well, we're a family. Amen? Do you know that in this place, man, I'm not even close to what I thought I was going to be on my notes. <laughs> in this place if you're a part of this, this church there is somebody that prays for you by name every single day of the world at least they're supposed to I don't actually watch them all <laughs> Amen. but I do there's, there's people here that I pray for every single day Pastor Virgil prays for every single day and then in the, our areas of service, the places uh, of area service, if you're not plugged in, there's a special people that are praying for people that aren't yet serving in the, in the area. But if you're plugged in and you're serving uh, in one of the ministries of the church, then that ministry leader in that area, they're praying for you every single day of the world. Why? Because we're a community. And it's important that we pray for one another. Amen? We're there for one. The, the reason that Darlene's not here today to help with the email deal and filling out those names is because she's at the hospital. Not in, I mean, she's at the hospital with somebody. Her and Eugene are, are, are with the, uh, the Vellas today. Uh, they're in, in the hospital. Miss, Miss Ardeth went back to the hospital the other day to, to get some, uh, uh, some more blood. She was getting low on blood, so she went in and she's getting some blood and and uh, uh, receiving some treatment there. She had some swelling. Amen? And some fluids that wasn't draining out, so they're helping to do some things to help that fluid drain out so she can get back up on her feet. Amen? Amen? And so they're there uh, with them supporting the family and praying with her today. Praise God. Why? It's community. They had a relationship. They had a place and people to turn to. The other day, you know, Josh is an EMT and a, a firefighter. Amen. And the other day, uh, 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 we, I was out there praying on Thursday with her and, and things. And then on Friday, she had an appointment, couldn't make the appointment. And uh, 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 long, you know, through a chain of events, Josh goes out there. He's got some medical background. He's able to look at, look at some things and say, you know what, this, this doesn't look right. This isn't, this isn't how this should be. We need to go get some help. Like community. He was in a situation... And he needed someone to call, and there was someone in the family. Why? Because relationships are made. Community. If you never want to have relationships in your life, I guess you can do that. But not only is it going to be lonely, but it's going to be uh, um, uh, pretty powerless. Because there's some times that you need to help, someone else needs to come over and, and give you a little bit of the flow that's coming through them. Amen? I, I, I knew this guy that uh, um, his water pipe had broke between the street and the house, right? So that means 
city of Tucson, it's not our problem. We'll get the water to that meter. On the other side of the meter, man, that's on you. Right? Well, that pipe broke. They didn't have any water. Couldn't quite get it fixed right then. Well, their neighbor ran a garden hose from their outside spigot over to their spigot. They shut off the, 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 the main valve here and had it there so there was water that would flow. There's some times in life where it's just like, man, everything's going crazy and I just don't have the, the flow the, the, what's go, what, you know, because I'm distracted, whether it be because maybe, maybe just I've been assaulted on so many directions that, I, that I'm just not firing. And I need some help. You know, James chapter 5, it says, the prayer of faith. I mean, call for the elders of the church. And they're going to pray over that person, helping to, to, to get them in a place built back up where they can tap in in faith. Amen. Again, community. That's a way that they help to, to get that, that back up to a place where, you're, where you, the flow is coming back into your house, full charged again, so that you can grab hold of that promise of God for yourself. Sometimes we need other people praying for us, praying with us, encouraging us. Sometimes you just need someone to grab the lifeline of their garden hose and, and hook it up and run it over to your house for just a little bit. Amen. Amen. So you can get that refreshing go back on until we, until we take that problem and we get the, the problem fixed, whether the problem be you know devotion, whether the problem be you know, whatever the, the, the issue is that got us unplugged in the first place. Amen? Community. Praise God. Lord said He's turning it up on His end. He's turning it up at His flow. We want to make sure that we keep it turned up here in this house. Amen? Because if it's not turned up then here when we come together, there's things that we can do to help shut that valve off. You know, over go to Mark chapter 6. We'll just show you here. We want to keep this valve turned up. I want to see some more wonderful things of the presence of God. I love the presence of God. I love the anointing. I love the power of God flowing. Amen. I love when people get healed. Amen. People get healed. I love when gifts of manifestations are, 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 are in operation. Man, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. He's turning it up. That means there's going to be more power available. More flow available here. Will we keep our will we keep our valves open so that it flows in us and through us when we leave this place? Mark chapter six it says then he went out from there and came to his own country and his disciples followed him and when the Sabbath had come he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What wisdom is this which uh, is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? That's a pretty big family. Not to mention all his sisters. <laughs> Can you imagine just being one of those siblings of Jesus growing up? Judas, why aren't you more like your brother? <laughs> Simon, don't you tell me you got that from Jesus. I know Jesus wouldn't be having none of that, that, that stuff in his room. You know? don't, don't, Simon, don't you be blaming them cigarettes on Jesus. Those ain't Jesus' cigarettes. We know Jesus. Just think about that. Anyway. And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. And he could do 
no mighty work there, except that he laid his hand on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Don't you think Jesus was probably pretty turned up? <laughs> Amen. John said he had the Spirit uh, uh, like, like no one had ever had the Spirit before. He had a measure of the Spirit like no one else had ever had before. Jesus, uh, uh, when I read through the Gospels, I'm thinking if, if anybody ever walked, up, walked around with, with the power of God just constantly just turned up in their meetings, is Him. He was a pretty turned up type of guy. Amen? But it says here, in this service, He could do no mighty work. I don't think it was because that God turned down the valve. On his end. Do you think the Father God just, well, we're just going to dial it down today. No, he's turned it up. He says he could do no mighty works there except he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Here it is. It's, the, it's a... The Sabbath, Jesus is teaching, preaching. They're enamored by His words. They're enamored and enthralled by the testimonies that they've heard about people being healed and delivered. But at the end of the day, most of the people left unchanged. And to me, that's... that's uh, it, as it, uh, when I think about Jesus, He marveled at their unbelief. But, it's, but beyond that, I mean, I've got to think he's just thinking, his heart's got to be broken. He could do there no mighty work. Mighty works needed to be done. There was a necessity. But he couldn't do them. Something short-circuited that, that, that place there. And most of the people that needed something from God in that day, who was there in power to supply, went home unchanged and ill-affected. They got nothing. They got nothing. See, to me, that's a shame. That's just a crying shame. It breaks my heart. But you know, there are people that even come to this church. Amen? Well, we've got an excellent, a wonderful teacher of the Word here. And really, everybody that he brings into this pulpit brings the word with life and truth and, and, and fullness. And, and there's something in those messages that, that equips us and strengthens and available for us. And sometimes we leave unchanged. I don't think that's God's intention for us to just come to church and go home the same. I love that old song. We won't leave here like we came in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Because the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. We won't leave here like we came in Jesus' name. Amen? Why would we, don't, why would we want to... You've got the opportunity to get something today that will change our lives. But it's on us. I love the Message Bible here. One of the words there for it says unbelief. The way the Message Bible translates it, it says, He didn't do many miracles there because of their hostile indifference. Because of their indifference. I think we fall into that trap sometimes of indifference. It's Sunday. Church, here we go. We get up. We eat our cereal, you know. Brush our teeth. And we get in the car. Here we go. And we're going to go and we're going to laugh a little bit with our friends. And then we're going to sing some songs. And, you know, and we're going to drop some money in a bucket. And then we're going to sit you know, for 45 minutes or an hour. And then we're going to get up and we're going to drink some more coffee, laugh, and go home. And it's just that indifference to the process. Indifference to what's going on. Oh, it's just that song again. I like it when so-and-so sings it better on the radio. 
Mental assent is a form of indifference. Malachi chapter 3. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're doing that again. I've been in church for 35 years. and Oh my gosh. Will a man rob God? No, are they idiots? But you do anyway. How do you do it? Through ties. Oh my gosh. Indifference. Shutting off. Turning it down. Saying... You know, that's the, that's the Muzak in my head. <laughs> that's, okay, we'll, we'll listen again. What is it? Indifference. They were indifferent to Jesus. I'm familiar. Familiarity. I'm familiar with that verse. Mark 11. <laughs> I got this faith thing. Amen. I listened to Kenneth Copeland. Dr. Price. Man, I've got all the old Brother Hagen tapes. I even got them on 8-track. <laughs> Those are especially anointed. <laughs> Indifference can get us in trouble. Oh, here's one of my favorites. This, 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 I, I thought about this one. I said, oh, man, this, this, this kind of hurts my toes. <laughs> what about healing lines? When I was having a conversation with a, the, a pastor the other day, Pentecostal, you know, a wonderful. I mean, we were talking about this subject, and uh, 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 I was talking to him, and, and uh, he said, you know, one of the problems that and I, 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 I completely I identified with it, so you can shoot me later. But he said, you know, one of the problems is, he says, you know, in a lot of our uh, 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 charismatic, word of faith, you know, Pentecostal churches, we've allowed the, 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 the prayer line to become liturgy. And it's just the, what are we going to do? Well, I don't know what we'll do. We'll just pray for people. That's what we do every week, right? We're just going to pray for people. Not led by the Spirit. Not, I mean, now we can pray in faith. Amen? Absolutely. We can always just pray in faith. And, and and it, but it's like, Man, they just got a problem. We didn't even teach on it with the subject. We didn't even talk. I mean, with that individual, they just come up. We're just going to, if you've got any problems anywhere, whatever your problem is, we're going to pray for you. And people come up and they got no faith whatsoever. They don't even know that the Bible says that God wants them well. But they're like, I got a problem. They don't even, I mean, they're, they're thinking, they, they don't even know that, that, that God wants to provide for them and help them in their situation. They don't even know that God wants them happy. They're just like, I mean, I'm just totally depressed, and I actually think God made me this way. God did all this junk in my life, and God did all this thing, but if you think praying will, will, will do something, then let's pull the slot machine. And they're coming up, and, 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 and in our charismatic word of faith churches, we're just coming down and said, praying, hallelujah, free, free, free. And there was no anointing. There was no being spirit-led in that situation. Sometimes God will do that just supernaturally. Just free someone for something without a place of faith. There's a, either special faith or a word of knowledge. We see that in, in the gospel with that guy um, by the pool of Bethesda. The guy had no faith to be healed, but the, the gifts of healing was in operation through Jesus. And he showed up and the guy said, he says, you want to be healed? And the guy says, I can't be healed because I can't get in the water. Look at me. I've been trying to get in the water. No one put me in the water. The angel stirs the water. And then... I can't get in. Someone beats me to it, so it just ain't happening. And Jesus said, man, you idiot. No. <laughs> he said, uh, so it wasn't this guy's faith at all that healed him in that situation. Well, there was, a, there was something in operation, and that was different. But sometimes we just say, oh, look, man, anybody got a problem? Just come on up here. We're going to pray, and it's going to be done. And they're, in, they're, they're thinking, they short-circuit the whole thing because they don't even believe it in the first place. And if you think God is the one who's making you sick, making you broke, slapping you in the face, making you depressed, doing whatever, it's going to be really hard to receive anything good from Him if He's your problem. So we were talking about that. and you know, Sometimes we've just made that part of the, the liturgy. Well, I don't know what else to do. I guess we're just going to pray for folk. Now, if that makes you mad, then sorry. No, I'm not. Because we do it too with our friends and stuff in the community. They have a problem and we just say, 
let me pray for you. Well, we, we, we are a get it now. I want the answer. I want the thing now. I'm, I, you know, uh, uh, and as a result, you know, with your food you eat, if the food you want now, and you eat the food, I want it now, my burrito, I want my thing now. You know, it's not good for you. There's things that are lacking. You may get a burrito, and you may get it now, but you may not get the, the goodness, the nutrition, the fullness of what it, of what it really it should be. You may get a little dose of something. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. It's a beef burrito, not beans. <laughs> if you don't have a church that you can laugh, man, I tell you what, you're in trouble. Um, <laughs> That's free. Ah, praise the Lord. We're talking about something good, aren't we? Yeah. We want it now. That burrito. We want the thing now. And, you know, and, and sometimes we're not willing to do the little bit of preparation to, to, to do the, to, you know, get the nice tortilla, get it made right, get the cook and prepare the food and the things in such a way that when it's done, not only does it taste good. Amen. But there's life and life more abundantly. <laughs> Instead of being silicone and all the other stuff that in the prepackaged foods and, and things. Anyway. Wow. How did I get here? Indifference. The healing line. Uh, uh. Sometimes we do it in church, though. We say, oh, pastor, you know, there may be a specific word. You know, and, and maybe it's a word, you know, about something about joint damage. And there is an anointing there to pray for people with joint damage. And sometimes we sit out here and we go, I don't have any joint damage. You know, I don't, I, 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 I have a headache. That's what I need. I, I need healing for my head. I don't have any joint damage. <laughs> and we unplug from what's happening and from what's going here. The power is is available to hear and heal. And if God at that moment wants to specifically address some people with joint damage, awesome. But guess what? Just because you're out here and you don't have joint damage, listen up. If the power of God, the anointing is turned up, and particularly right now in that, in that thing, there's a special anointing to heal somebody with something, guess what? Sitting back here, it's entirely possible you could just tap into the anointing for your headache anyway. Maybe though that word and that healing line was specifically to help encourage the individual in their circumstance and their pain, but that doesn't mean you shut off your valve. That doesn't mean you turn it off in the back just because you got a headache. No, praise God if God's no respecter of persons and He's healing them with the bad toe or the bad knee or the bad shoulder, then praise the God He's going to heal me. And so I'm just keeping my valve open, letting the flow come through, and I'm going to receive it sitting in the back row with my head down, my hands up, however I need to be. I'm just going to listen and obey, and I'm going to grab a hold by faith. We can do it. Don't unplug. What is that? Indifference. And he could do no mighty work there. Why? Because of their Hostile indifference because of their unbelief. The cotton patch version translates it disrespect, which if you look at the Greek, the Greek word is apistia, and one of the words that it means there is uh, not only it means a, a, a disbelief, right, but also means unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. That's disrespectful. Amen. Perhaps, maybe sometimes, one of the things that dials down the fullness of what God wants to do in any given service or for us, could it perhaps be because I'm indifferent to the ministry that's taking place? Could it be? I mean, I've been, this March, I'll be listening to Pastor Virgil's stories for 14 years. I tell you what, and sometimes. 
I just, I, I, I'll finish the story before he does. Amen. Nancy, no, Nancy's heard, heard him a few times. Sometimes you go, oh, you left out this. I mean, but you know what? It never gets old to me. You know why it never gets old to me? Because I keep it turned up. I keep it turned up. I will not become indifferent to that story. I'm not going to become, it's just same old, same old. I've heard that before. I know how that goes. I know where the next point is going. No, I won't become indifferent. Why? Because God has something in that story, in that uh, uh, um, relaying that, that illustration, in that scripture for me right now, in this moment, as it's being spoken, as it's being shared through Him. Why? Because I pray for Him every single day. And you should too, because He's our pastor. Amen. Amen. And I believe that when He comes and He speaks, not only has He spent time seeking and honoring God and for, for what uh, uh, the word that we need in this season, at this time, in this place, and for that day. But I know that that morning, he spent a good hour plus praying in the Holy Ghost, listening to God, and, and, and he's tuned up. And when he begins to speak, that he speaks with the tongue of the learned, a word in season to those who are weary. And when I come and I need something, whatever I may be strong, but if I need something, I'm weary. And if I'll listen, the Holy Ghost will use that message to encourage me in that area, in that one place that maybe I'm lacking or maybe I'm weary or maybe I'm whatever. I can listen to it. I can grab a hold of it and go forward and keep the fountain turned up and not unplug. <laughs> no, I was just unplugging for a minute. <laughs> now, sometimes we use our mobile devices to, to follow in the Scripture. Sometimes we use our, our mobile devices in, 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 those, in those things. But when we sit here and, and we use our mobile device and we go on Facebook... And we're going, oh, man, can you believe that? Them Russians are back in Ukraine again. Oh, man. <laughs> Dear Lord, we need to be... Pr well, they are. They never really quit, but anyway. <laughs> Uh-oh, you know, I better check that. Oh, man, look at that. I just got a text from, from uh, um, Papa Murphy's. They got him a special today. Wow, I feel the, 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 the rocks. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's turned up. Familiarity was probably that problem. We want to cooperate with the anointing. We want to co cooperate with what's going on. And over in John chapter 2. John chapter 2, we see the water get turned into wine. And I like this... Uh, this uh, miracle, this showing of His glory uh, for a number of reasons. I believe it, uh, uh, there's a number of things we could probably look at to, to illustrate the point I want to make. But I really like this one because, you know, here it is. It's on the you know, it says on the third day, verse 1, there was a wedding in uh, Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and His disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to Him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, Why is that my problem? What does your concern have to do with me? And if I would have said, woman, to my mama, man, that would not have been a good day. <laughs> my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six, set six water pots of stone, according to the manner of the purification of the Jews, contained 20 or 30 gallons of water apiece. Think about a five-gallon bucket of water. I mean, that's pretty heavy. So you're talking four to six of those, you know. Go to the, go to the paint store, the five-gallon bucket. Four to six of those in each one of those water pots. Amen. So you got six of those you're filling up. So that's what, 
six times four, 24 to, to you know, 30 some odd pots of water that you went and hauled. Fill up them pots with water. It says then they filled up the pots with water. Uh, and then they filled them up to the brim and he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to them, Every man in the beginning sets out the good wine, then the guests, when the guests get all tanked up, <laughs> says that in the cotton patch, and when they get all tanked up, then the inferior. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This act was in Cana. First, here, there's a few things I want to pull out of this real quickly, and that's one of those. He did not do this miracle alone. The power didn't just flow. He could have, I mean, I guess he probably could have just looked at that pot and said, Pot, be filled. <laughs> Amen? I suppose we could have had ravens come and spit a bunch of wine out of their mouths. I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose that's an option. They probably can't hold a lot, but he used birds in the past to, to bring meat to folk. Why not bring, bring wine? He could have done all kinds of things, but he didn't do it alone. Instead, he said, y'all go get some water. Y'all dump it in the pot. There was participation there. I believe that this was for a number of reasons. He's got at least four disciples with him. If you look at that point, they hadn't yet called apostles, hadn't got all the, the folk yet together, but he's got at least four of them with him. I believe he's set an example saying, hey, because it said this is the beginning of signs, the beginning of miracles that Jesus did that showed his glory. I believe he's setting forth a pattern and helping to show these guys, look, there's going to be a lot of wonderful, amazing things that are going to take place over these next three and a half years. And I'm not just going to go do them alone. I'm willing to use anybody that will allow me to use them. Is that going to be you clowns? No. Is that going to be you guys? <laughs> See, my Jesus in my head speaks differently than some others. I want you to see this, the location. I think this is just interesting. Sometimes we, we get things have to look a certain way and be a certain way for the move of God to happen. You know, and this is Cana. This is a tiny little town outside of another tiny little town. Actually, a little bit bigger town. But it wasn't done in the bright lights of the big city. This wasn't in Jerusalem. It wasn't in Phoenix. Amen. It wasn't in the big city. It wasn't on TBN. It was in Cana, about six miles to the northeast of Nazareth. It's a small town today, even comparatively. What a big place. Sometimes we think things have got to look a certain way. The move of God, if this thing's going to happen, we've got to have certain things happen, and we've got to do the certain songs. If we didn't do certain songs, then man, just maybe God can't do what he wants to do. This service looks like a different service. It sounds like a different service. It feels like a different service. It looks different. There's different people here, whatever it may be. It's not about the, the location. It wasn't even a Sunday or a Saturday for that matter. It's probably Tuesday when this happened. Of all days, to, that's the traditional wedding day for, for Jewish folk, Tuesday. Well, it is. It's, it was because that was the day that God called good twice. It's considered good luck. You start your new wedding, you do it on, virgins get married on Tuesdays and non-virgins get married on Wednesdays. I'm just saying what, I just, go read Jewish books, they're really interesting. There's all kinds of <laughs> weird, weird laws and rules about why we do certain things. That's just a traditional day for Jewish weddings. It's Tuesday, so it's probably a Tuesday. So anyway, uh, uh, um, dear Lord. <laughs> Here's the point. They're in an unlikely place on an unlikely day. 
But there was a necessity and there was a need. Amen? There were people that were willing to cooperate. Jesus was there in power. You know, every time we come together, Jesus is here in power. But He specifically told us this wonderful, wonderful, amazing word. He's turning it up. That means there's going to be more power available. We've had some incredible services and times in the Lord. It's getting better. He's turning it up. He's turning it up. Praise the Lord. There was a need. Praise God, we have plenty of them. <laughs> and people come in all the time. Part of our vision, we're going to repair the broken. Prepare the willing. So if you have a need to be prepared, praise God, there's more power available for you. If you, there's something still broken in you, there's more power available. Repair the broken. And if you just need to just holler out and shout and have a good time, there's more power to celebrate the goodness of God. There was desire. I want you to see that. There was desire. Man, oh man, we're almost out of wine. What's going to happen? The party's going to stop. And not only going to stop, it's going to severely crash. We want to keep on celebrating and having a good time. <laughs> Amen. That, that, that song was track was going through my head too. We're going to keep on selling. I don't want to quit. Is there a desire not to quit? Is there a desire for more? We sang that today about having a party. We're having a party in the presence of the Lord. Well, praise God. I don't want the party to quit. I don't want the party to stop. I want every time we come, the party just to pick right up where we left it the week before with one another. Amen. That I'm partying throughout the week on my own, uh, uh, communicating and having community with one another that we're partying so that every time we come back, it's like a, a, it just keeps building. It keeps just flowing. Why? Because the Holy Ghost flow doesn't ever have to turn off, doesn't have to stop. He said, I'm, there'll be more. Let's make more wine. You're almost out? We'll make some more. There's an ample supply. I'm talking 300 and some odd gallons of juice, man. For a town of probably 300 folk. Maybe. That's a lot of juice. Ample supply. They desired for the party not to quit. I desire to see more and more and be a part of more and more. And, I, and we want to keep that uh, in, in our thinking. We want to keep that in our, uh, 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 in our hearts more and more. Why? Because people need it. There's, God said he's turning up the flow here in this place. I want it more and more here. But I want it more and more here so I can keep my valve open. So that I can have more and more and more. Why? Because people need it out there. Amen. I love when, I meet, when you meet people and you just have that sense of God to do something and you just pray with them and talk to them a little bit and people get saved and people get healed. And it ain't just because of us. I mean, just, it ain't just happened to pastors. I mean, this last Wednesday, we had uh, eight people, seven people rededicate their, name to, re rededicate their lives to the Lord in the Pima County Jail. And then they had a crazy, wild prayer meeting. Amen. And people were getting healed in the Pima County Jail. That wasn't me. Amen. That was the ladies that went down to the jail. Why? They had it turned up. They got a dose of the flow. They said, God, turn it up. Man, I'm ready for him to turn it up. Wherever we go, I'm just turned up. I'm ready to go. Turned up. There was desire to celebrate. The other thing we see out of this, this, uh, this illustration here is, I want you to see this. There were people committed to see the desire met. This is where it gets real personal. <laughs> because it's not just about me and my party. But it's about you and your need. Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, go do it. And they said, all right. Well, go get some water, fellas. Okay. They were committed to do something that they probably weren't going to get any fanfare for. 
No accolades, no title, no pat on the back. Probably going to get water on their shoes, water on their shirt. Probably going to get a little messy and a little dirty. You've carried some buckets of water for us in the past. Amen. <laughs> we won't rehash that old story from that first building. <laughs> but some people that aren't afraid to just do a little bit of work. And they're, what? They're, part of the, they're part of the celebration. They reap the rewards of the whole family, but they don't just set out to do it for themselves, but to see a greater need met. People desire to see that need met. They fetched water. They carried those things. Maybe it's washing windows, cleaning baptistries, pulling weeds, doing all kinds of stuff, driving the van. If you want to drive the van, see Sherry. She'll get you trained up to help out with that. Praise God. There were people willing to do what was necessary to cooperate with Jesus. People were necessary for the spectacular to occur. And there's a whole lot of instances like that in the Scripture where people were just willing to be a part of what God wanted to do in a place, in a city, in a party, in their life and in the lives of the people around them. I'm willing to be a part. I want to help. Praise God. Well, I tell you what, there's a whole lot of other stuff we could do, talk about right here, but I want the ushers to go ahead and get together and come on up. and We're, we're going to receive communion. I'm going to talk to you for a little bit while the elements get passed. Just a little bit about more about that idea of our community. Because, you know, there are really a couple kinds of, few different types of people that come to church and that are in our services and are around. And, and, and there's, there's spectators. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, when Jesus fed, fed the 4,000, there was, there was spectators and there were participators. It's just that simple. You go back and read the story, it says a lot of the folks showed up because Je they'd heard Jesus did some cool stuff. They thought, man, this would be kind of cool. Let's go check it out, man. You know? We hear Bono's playing. Let's go check it out. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, okay. The, the Grateful Dead retour, right? So we want to go check it out. And so they, 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 uh, there are spectators there, but then there were people that were willing to participate. And he said, now, y'all, you guys are going to participate. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to go help people sit down in groups of 50, groups of 10s, 50s, whatever. And how many of that, that probably been a bit, a bit of a problem. You know, some of the ushers will probably agree. You know, they help people seat. I don't want to sit over here. This chair is too hard. I don't know what the, what the, the, the complaints were or what things happened. Uh, uh, excuse me, Nathaniel. N Nathaniel, um, I, I have a hangnail. Is there a first aid kit? I don't know what the distractions may have been. Oh, Judas. Judas. Excuse me, Judas. Um, I, man, I, I, I didn't have my offering ready. I came in late. Would, would you make sure Jesus gets this? That's probably the wrong guy to give it to, huh? I'm just thinking of distractions and things that happen as we come together in ministry. And those things. But they, they just kept staying steady and getting everybody sitting together, doing the things, obeying, just following with what Jesus said to do for that time and that place and that service. And they said, we're going to plug in. And whatever you need us to do, Jesus, we're there. If you need us to sit and pray, we'll sit and pray. If you need us to help people sit, we'll sit. If you need us to hand people bread, we'll hand people bread. If you need us to pray for folk, we'll pray for folk. What do you need me to do? I'm ready. I'm willing. I came prepared to be used by you, Jesus, in this place because I want your power, the power of God, to flow. And it's that attitude that helps us puts us in a position for it to flow through us. I mean, I love when I see people out in the, in, the, in, the, in the foyer praying before church, the family room out there. Why? Because they're community, talking to one another. They find out something going on, and they're like, man, I need you to pray with me. Would you pray with me about this? this is, I just got this report. Amen? I love seeing those things happening. I love people out there with their Bibles having a good time in the Word. Community. We don't want to be just spectators because spectators don't always receive the benefits. They don't always receive the 
benefits. The pool of Bethesda, there was a lot of spectators there that day watching the water. That guy with his hangnail, you know, Nathaniel didn't help him out, so he's there watching the water. Amen. I always picture some kid, just, I mean, just honorary little cuss, just sitting back over here with pebbles. <laughs> just watching the people dive for it. But that day, that not all the spectators got something. Amen. There's always going to be spectators. We want to receive. We want to walk in. We want to make sure everybody around us gets something. We want to be engaged in the supernatural. And realize this is not always spectacular the way we might think it to be. But it's always supernatural. And where the power of God is present to heal, to deliver, to set free. That's an amazing and wonderful thing. I believe we're going to see some spectacular. But don't become indifferent to recognizing the supernatural presence of God every time we come together. Because that's one of the surest and fastest and quickest ways to shut off the valves and to, shut off, to slow down the flow on our end. So we won't receive. Although there was power available... He could not do any mighty works there because of their unbelief, because of their indifference, because of their disrespect to the things of ministry or to the nature of Jesus or the person. Amen? Praise God. Oh, I thought we already passed them out. Oh, dear Lord. Let's pass those out. I'm sorry. So you get talking, you don't pay any, you don't see anything. I see mine out here. I'm waiting for everybody to, I'm ready to pray. Amen, amen. We, re we uh, receive open communion here. That means that, uh, um, you know, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you may partake with us in the family. If you're not, that's okay. You don't don't feel out of place. You can. You, it just doesn't mean the same thing to you. Amen. You can go ahead and grab a cracker and some juice too. But it doesn't mean the same thing. We'd like to pray with you afterwards if you'd like, so that you can be let into the family. We participate in many many ways. We want to recognize the person of power and authority that's present, that Jesus is always with us, that the Holy Ghost is always here. And at the drop of the hat, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, God can be present to move. No matter how you came feeling, that doesn't mean that God's not ready and willing and wanting to do something. Our, we want to keep our expector up. Recognize and remember the fact that He is turning it up and that He is here. That place of unity in this vision of what God's doing. I mean, make sure someone hollers at me once everybody gets served, okay? We want to remember Him and that He is turning up the fountain in this place. Remember that you're part of the fountain. We are a part of the fountain. That's why here in a moment when we partake of the bread, it talks about the bread being the body. We are the body of Christ. We are partakers in His divine nature. Not only does the fountain flow here, but if I let Him, and I'll keep my valve turned up in me, and I'll keep the valve uh, uh, turned out, Amen? He'll flow through me. For those that need it in our community, amen. Praise the Lord. It looks like we're finishing up there in the back.
You know, we come so much in that, man, no. No. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. It says that on that night that he took the bread and he broke it. And he handed it to his disciples. And he said, This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Well, when we come together, we want to remember him. And when I when we come together from this moment forward, every service for this year, I want to remember, and I'm part of a body that's been turned up. He's turning it up. He's turned it up. I remember that He, Jesus, has turned up the flow. Amen. We're going to remember that as we partake of this bread today. Amen. He's turning it up. Go ahead and eat. And then it says He took the cup he said, this, is, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink it as often as you will. But do it, how? In remembrance of me. Well, Lord Jesus, we remember you right now. We remember that the life of God is in us. We remember the words that you've spoken to us and that you've spoken in this place. We thank you, Lord. We remember that you've saved the best lot wine for last. And now is the time. Amen. Thank you that there's ample supply. That you're with me. That you're in me. And Lord, we remember this. We're going to cooperate with you as we partake in your cup right now. Go ahead and drink. Thank you, Lord. Now you can cooperate with each other by passing the cups to the aisle. And go ahead and stand up and we're going to pray. Amen. Let's just say this together. Can we? Let's just say this. Let's say, He's turning it up. We're turning it up. I'm turning it up. Because He's turning up the flow coming into this place. Amen? We're going to turn up our ability to receive here in this place. We're controlling our attitude. We're controlling those things. We're controlling that expectancy. We're controlling that switch of faith. And this, We're turning it up. Amen? And when as we walk out these doors and we go out to the community, say, I'm turning it up. I'm turning it up. His, uh, his ability to use me. I'm going to listen to the Lord. I'm going to obey what the, the Spirit of God speaks to me. And people are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise God. Thank you for uh, your time. You're just dismissed.